I didn't really have a title to it. I've just got so much that I've been in here praying about. God's been showing me. My job is to hear from Him and to come and to bring it and deliver it to you. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5, and then I want you to go to the book of Haggai. So get the book of Haggai, get it marked in your Bible. Uh, the chapter 1, verse, or chapter 1, verse, verse 5 of Haggai, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about one scripture here, and then I'm going to get into that, and uh, are you on yet? Yep, so Father, we love you, I submit to you, Holy Ghost, God asks you to, to anoint me to feed your people tonight, uh, today, your, your, your sheep, Lord, I surrender to you wholeheartedly, give us your word, it's going to help us in due season, in Jesus' name, bless your word, amen, amen, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. He says this right here. He says, hold on a second. Let me find the place here. I'm going to go on down. That ain't, that ain't what I wanted there. I'm sorry. Chapter 2 and verse Five. Had the wrong chapter there. Bear with me just for a minute. I got you some meat here. We're talking about tithes and offerings today. But we're also, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give us some revelation about our life and about our, about our walk as a Christian. Okay, when you get these things, start, when you start lining up with God and you start being obedient to His Word, you have a knowledge of the truth and you can walk in God's best for your life. So in verse 5 of chapter 2, he says this, And every plant of the, the field... Before it was in the earth, wait, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now listen to this. So he said he had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till it, to cultivate it, to manage it. Now picture this. But there went up amidst of the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And then the Lord, the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. So he, he formed this, the, the earth. He, he made the garden. He made the plant. He made everything else before he put man in it. Then he formed man. So he put it there and then he put man in it to work it. To manage it. To till it. So he said this. He said he hadn't caused it to rain on the earth. Because there was no man to work it. Manage it. So why would he do that and bring forth a harvest if there's no man to, to gather it? Understand that. So now let's go to the book of Haggai real quick. I want to set a foundation right there. This is really important. It's, this is going to help you so much because some of us, we're sowing a lot and we're bringing in little. We're, 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 you catch yourself sowing and you don't understand why you're not reaping yet. Well, there's a time and a season for everything. Okay? There's a time to sow. There's a time to plant. There's a time to reap. Okay? But I'm going, to give you some, I'm going to give you something here that, just, that God was showing me this morning. So, he's been ministering to me for a while about it. But he, he really just brought it out this morning and said to give it to you. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 5 he says, Now this, therefore the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Say, consider my ways. <clears throat> you have sown much, but bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Imagine that, earning your wages and putting it in a bag with holes in it. What happens when you put something in with the holes in it? It falls out, don't it? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up into the mountain, bring, it, bring the wood, and build my house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Now listen to this. God said he blew on it. There's a lot of things in, 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 our, in our lives that God's blowing on. And let me tell you, it ain't even the devourer. It's God blowing on it. And when God blows on it, honey, it ain't nothing going to happen. I don't care. what. I don't care. You could, you, could, you could work from daylight to dark for the rest of your days. If God blows on it, it's gone. Amen. So it, we're looking at something here. I'm going to bring out some revelation for you. You look for much and lo, it came to little. When it did blow, when it when it when it did when you did brought it when you did bring it home, I blew on it. Why, saith the Lord of Hosts? Because 
my house is laid to waste, and you run to every man to his own house. He was talking about sealed houses. You're living in your houses. You're taking care of your house while, while my house is laid in waste. What I've said to do is build the temple. What I've commanded you to do, you've not done. So now everything that you put your hand to, I'm going to blow on it. You sow a lot, but you're bringing in little. As he said back in the book of Genesis, he said that, you know what, there was no man to till it. There was no man to work it and manage it. He said in due season that you would reap. Amen. In due season that you would reap, but can you, but can you manage the harvest? Can you manage what God's wanting to release to you? There's some of you been sowing and you're sowing into your future. You're sowing for that day, but God can't release it to you yet because you've not learned to manage where you're at yet. You've not learned to conquer where you are yet. You've not learned to conquer with the finances that you've got now, so how could He ever release to you greater? You've not le learned how to do the simplest things, which is tithe and bring offerings to the house of God. If you ain't doing the, them, the little things, then how could He ever trust you with the greatest things and the greatest riches and even more of the financial riches that He wants to give to you? How could he do that if you're not there? See, he couldn't cause it to rain on your stuff yet. He couldn't cause increase to come yet because you ain't prepared for it. So it, that's why I say don't. you've got to trust the process. The process is what takes you to a place where you can handle what God's wanting to release to you. That's why he said you're, bringing, you, you're sowing a lot, you're working hard, you're doing all these things, but you're bringing in very little. And when you do bring it in, I'm blowing on it because you ain't paying attention to what I've said to do, which is build my kingdom, which is build my house. You can take that however you want to, natural, physical, but if you don't take care of the natural things, amen, then how are you going to take care of the supernatural and the spiritual things? What's most important? I'm giving you some keys here. I'm giving you some keys for your life here that's going to help you. Because soon as, man, people, oh, oh, Lord, help me. Help me to stay on this. I'm not beating you up. I'm trying to help us to see something here. Because when we take, when we take back to looking to, to building and to getting involved in what God's doing and putting our hand to the plow, amen, as a team, and, and then, then you start sowing. And then when it's time, God says, now I can release it. Now I can release it. Now I can rain upon it. Now that thing that I've been wanting to do all along is going to come forth because you can manage it. You can handle it. Now I'm going to release it to you. So you sow in. So right here he was talking about you sow a lot, but you bring in little. You know, <clears throat> praise God. I don't want to be to a place where I'm sowing a lot and I'm bringing in little. I want to be to a place where I'm sowing a lot and I'm bringing in a lot. Why? Because I can keep sowing. I can keep, and we're talking about finances here. We're talking, about, we're talking about financial. We're talking about that. But if you don't learn to steward the financial things in your life and that becomes your God, there's a lot of poor people that money has become their God. I can take a lot of poor people right now. I can take you to the, to, to the most drug-infested neighborhoods in the world and you can take $20 and it probably cost you your life. They kill you for it. Why? Because money is their God and you ain't stealing nothing from them. <clears throat> but that, you get what I'm saying to you. So, 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 so it does not have to do with stature or any of that that God be, becomes... You know, or that money becomes a god. <clears throat> when God's saying these things, I'm I'm trying to get to you, but I'm trying to get you to steward the things that you have now. That's why I said I wanted to rain on it, but I couldn't rain on it because there wasn't a man to till it yet. There wasn't a man to manage it. They he wasn't they wasn't able to be handled yet. So as soon as as soon as it it starts to you, you you get to where you can manage it, where you can handle it, then God says, now I'm gonna rain on it. Now what you've been sowing is gonna come forth. Now that now that thing's gonna start to come out. Now I can trust you, Amen. Now you can steward it well. You know that's why God told me this. He said this. He said, quit looking out there. It's coming. Quit looking at all the things that I show you. I know you're a visionary. Quit looking at all the things that you see out there that's coming in time and pay attention to where you're at now and start being excellent in the house and start being excellent and start doing and cultivating the things and the people that you've got now. Amen. So we've come back to a place where we've came in. And now, we're, now we're starting to steward the things that we've got, the people that we've got. Amen. Building the people that we've got. Going out as God, as God leads us. Now we're starting to steward what God's released to us. The building, the thing that, the, the, the place that we're in now. We start to steward this with excellence. We start to take our job seriously. We got a bus ministry. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you about these ministries that you're in. Okay, when you do it, and I, a sister, a sister was, 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 was ministering. I, I'm going to say this because it was ministering to me because it's something God's already been showing me about taking things with excellence. And she's like, I don't want to just get up there nonchalantly. And you shouldn't. I don't come behind this pulpit nonchalantly. I don't come without being fasting and praying and in the, in the Word of God and knowing what I'm fixing to say. I might not know everything God's going to tell me, but I prepare myself. 
I prepare myself. But see, what's it? What's this? When you get put into a ministry, how are you stewarding that ministry? What about your bus ministry? How are you stewarding that? I got I got a friend of mine. I sat down with. We sat down at a table with a friend of mine. That pastors a church here in town. They said they bought them two buses. They started running a bus ministry. They went to Nocrest, got twenty eight kids, and brought them into the thing. Brought twenty eight kids in there. Six of them got saved. Six families are in that church today. How are you stewarding the things you've got? What are you taking? What are you taking time to fast and pray? Are you building your own life in your own house while this house lies waste? You step into a position here, God expects you to take it very seriously about what you're doing. You think God's playing? No, He ain't. And if you're standing there not doing nothing and you don't decide to do step down and step away and let God fill that with somebody that will do it because He will fill the position, honey. You understand what I'm saying to you. God's house will be built. The kingdom will advance. The kingdom will be built. You can either be a part of it or you can stay on the sideline. You can go your own way. So this boat's going to sail, honey. This thing's going to continue to go and grow and do all the things that God has designed it to do. Okay? You can either be a part of the plan or you can go back and you can do your own plan and go your own way and God's going to blow on everything you do. I'm, not, I'm trying to get us to see the importance and get us shaken back up to what we're doing. That pastor took a vision. See, God's been doing something in the body. He's part of the body. Well, he took that, what I, what I cast the vision for a long time ago. And they, somebody took it and they said, you know what, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get all these kids. Went in there and got, and they said they went into youth ministry that day. There was 28 kids on a bus from one place. That somebody had went in there and got on the ground and took time out to do the ministry that they had been assigned to. If you don't learn to steward what you've been given, if you don't learn to steward where you're at, how are you ever going to get released anymore? You're going to be stuck in that same place or bouncing from here to there to here to there because you ain't being faithful and you ain't stewarding what you've got. God said, I can't give increase. You're worried about your life, your home, and all your stuff while my house lays waste. Mm -mm. Nuh uh. Not not the way God's will works. God, a lot of people going their own way, doing their own thing, and they let the house of God lie waste. They let the work of God lie waste. When God puts you in a position, or you step up to take a position, that's a very serious thing. And you, I, I suggest you do it with excellence. You learn to do it. You learn to steward it very well. If not, step down from your position. Step back and let somebody else to feel it that wants to with a fervency to go out and win the lost. Praise God to come in to bring it. Knowing we're a part of a team. We ain't just one man show. I just got a part to play. But we're a, we're a team. And when we all work together, guess what? The thing gets accomplished. God gets the glory. People's lives are changed. Praise God. Families' lives are restored and changed. Why? Because all of us have put our part in. All of us has put our hand to what we're doing. And we do it with excellence. And we fast. Like I said, we fast and we pray and we take, we take very, very, very seriously what we're doing because we're working for the kingdom and the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we're not serving just uh, whatever. Are we serving in the Father's house? Amen. Media team, whatever it is that you're doing, fast and pray. Get these things, get serious. Let God use you in the anointing to bring it up, to minister to people, to do outreach, whatever it is. When we learn to do our part, a man, it takes the weight off of everyone else and then things become excellent. Things, God can say, you know what, now I've got someone that can till. Now I've got people in place in this place. Now I can blow on it. Now, or now I can rain on it. Now I can release what I've been wanting to release to them all along. Now they're able to steward it. Now they're able to take care of it. And they're doing it seriously. And they're doing it the best they can. I'm not saying perfect, but they're learning and they're trying. And they're growing in the anointing that I've placed on this place. They're growing in that anointing. Now I can release to you. Now, not only am I going to do that, but since you paid attention to my house, says the Lord, since you paid attention to my work and my house, now I'm going to pay attention to yours. <laughs> now I'm going to pay attention to what's going on in your life. Now I'm going to pay attention to what... Amen. Amen. And right here, right here, it lays it out there. Now watch this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to close. And then go on down to verse 13. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, the spirit of Joshua and the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit, listen to this, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did the work, and did work in the house of the Lord of the hosts of their God. I want you to see that. Right here. Verse 14, look here, the last that verse. So not only did the, the prophets... The prophet's spirit gets stirred. What's, what's the, what, what happens when your spirit gets stirred up? That's called revival. That means that the spirit has been revived in you again. 
There's something about when you're backing up and backpedaling. I'm going to tell you something. We've all done it. When you start backing up and backpedaling, you feel like death's setting in. You feel it's the spirit of depression that wants to just blow your brains out sometimes. I'm just, I'm not, I know you ain't going to do that, but that's the way you feel. You're like, man, I'd rather go to heaven right now than lay here. Why? Because you're backing up. And God says, no, when you take back and get back into the place that I put you, get back up on the front lines, amen, get back into the work of God, your spirit's going to come to life in that moment. Revival automatically comes in that place to you. Now watch this. So the spirit of Zerubbabel, Shittiel, governor of Judah, the spirit of Joshua, the spirit of the, and the spirit of all the remnant of people were stirred up. Now watch this. And they came. And when they're spiritual, and they came. Say they came. And did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts their God. My goodness. They did the work. And their spirits were revived. You want to get revived? Get in the front lines. Put your hand to the plow. Put your hand to something. Take the weight of some of the things. Praise God. Start to get, get in line again with what God's wanting to do. We're not in line with our own will. We're in line with the Father's will. You understand that? When you get that, when you get that, when you get we serve a greater, amen, a greater purpose. So I want to, I want to give you a chance today to give, to tithe. I'm not going to go into it because I've got a message for you today. But I want to give you a chance to give, to tithe today, to bring back to God what is His and what He's moved on you to do. Amen. But I don't want you to get to a place where you're sowing a lot and bringing in little. Just know that what you've sowed in due time and in due season, you're going to reap. In due season, God's going to say, rain on that. And that harvest is going to come. It's inevitable. The harvest will come. Amen. So listen, if you need, if you need an envelope for your tithe... For your giving today, uh, one of these young gentlemen right here, these young disciples here, uh, will bring you an envelope. Listen, we've got text to give. If you, if you need to do text to give online, uh, we've got the number to text to give. We can get with you later and do that. Those of you online, listen, I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that this has sharpened you. And uh, anyway, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. If you get us a song, ma'am.